Let's now look at how you differentiate cos x from first principles. Okay, I've written the first two lines down. I first of all make use of this, which is the basic first principles expression that we need to be dealing with for any function. In this particular case, f of x is going to be cos x. So we're dealing with y equals cos x, so f of x is cos x. So when I come to write down this expression now, applying it to y equals cos x, we end up with lim delta x tends to naught of cos of x plus delta x instead of f of x plus delta x. So it's cos of x plus delta x minus cos x instead of minus f of x, all over delta x. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to do what I did in the previous video where we differentiated sine x. I'm going to apply a compound angle expression identity to this first term here. So you should know from your trigonometry that the cos of a plus b, x plus delta x here, but it's a plus b generally, will be cos of a cos of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b. And that's something you should know and be able to apply in this particular proof. So obviously in this case, x is what the a was and the delta x is what the b was. So let's now go back and apply this identity to this expression. So dy by dx will be the limit, delta x tend to naught of, so it's cos the first, cos the second. So it's cos of x, cos of delta x. And then it's minus, minus sine of the first, sine of the second. So all of that is equivalent to that there. Then you have take away cos x on the end, so we'll squeeze that in there, like so. And it's all going to be divided by delta x, like so. We now make use of the fact that ultimately delta x is going to shrink to nothing. In other words, delta x, where it appears there and there, are going to be angles measuring radians, and they are very, very small because they shrink to nothing. So we make use again of this fact that the sine of theta is approximately equal to theta in rads if we're dealing with very small angles. And that the cos of theta in rads is approximately 1 minus theta squared over 2 in rads if we're dealing with very small angles. So I go back now to this expression here and replace cos delta x, cos of theta with this. So that's going to get replaced with 1 minus delta x squared over 2. And the sine of delta x, sine of delta x will be replaced with just delta x. So this is going to give us the next line equals lim delta x tend to naught of. So we've got cos of x times the cos of delta x. So using this here, if it's delta x, you're going to get 1. So that times that, so it's cos x times 1 minus delta x in a bracket squared over 2. Take away, then you've got sine of x multiplied by, and then sine of theta is the same as theta, so sine of delta x will be the same as delta x, and then minus cos of x on the end, all divided by delta x. So we get to there. So what we're going to do now is just expand this bracket out. So you're going to get lim, delta x tend to naught, of expanding this bracket out, cos x times 1 is cos x. That times that is minus cos x multiplied by delta x, delta x squared over 2, minus the sine x times delta x. Don't forget minus cos x still at the end, very important. All divided by delta x. Similar sort of thing happens this time as happened in the previous video for sine x. Cos x at the beginning minus cos x on the end on the top line disappear with each other. So there you go. I'm then also going to say, right, these two terms on the top line now get divided by delta x. So we end up with lim. Delta x tends to naught of. This delta x squared over 2 shared by delta x is just going to give you a delta x over 2. You've still got the minus cos x at the front, so I'll leave that there. Then you've got minus sine x, like so, and then the delta x and the delta x would cancel, so I don't need to put any delta x's in, so we get to there. And now ultimately I make the full 
application of delta x tending to naught. So all delta x's here shrink to nothing. So let's save a line. That expression, that bit of the expression there, delta x over 2, that becomes nothing. So you end up with, if I apply this principle now, minus cos x times nothing minus sin x is what you end up with when you apply delta x tending to naught. That times nothing is nothing. And then you just end up with minus sin x. And there's the answer that you should be fam familiar with. When you differentiate cos x, you end up with minus sin x. So it's dy by dx is minus sin x. And there you go. That's how you differentiate cos x from first principles.